everyone. I wanted to talk today a little bit about distinguishing between what can be controlled and what cannot be controlled. Okay, so in sales, whatever you do, there are faucets or components of your product that can and cannot be um, manipulated or in your control, right? Like price, for example. A lot of times in insurance and Medicare, we can find a plan that has a price, but it's not something we can negotiate. Life insurance is another one. You can't really negotiate the price of insurance. You kind of put the deal together and see what you can get, right? As far as life insurance goes. And of course, for health insurance, it's what you see is what you get. So that part of the equation cannot really be messed with. That's not not something, it, it shouldn't be a discussion point, is what I'm trying to say. Because nothing can be changed. Similarly, what can be changed is the way that one, a member, potentially deals with their health, right? That is within their control, within the client's control. It's not within your control. You can educate, but you cannot tell your client to go to a doctor, right? You can encourage them. You can tell them to, you know, be healthy, do things that your doctor tells you to do, but you have no control over that. Like, you can, yes, you can, like how I am telling you to do these things, but whether you do them or not, or your client, your prospect, your member does them or not, that is not in your control. So when you are dealing with people, clients, you need to have a very firm, firm now, distinguish, firm boundary, I guess is a better word, between what you are able to have an influence on and what you are unable to have an influence on. I'll give you an example. This is gonna be kind of out of left field because I have to use another industry, not finance, to probably make things make things kind of, uh, I guess, um, relatable. Let's take someone who wants to go to the doctor, wants to see a specialist for a heart issue. Okay, they need a referral, so. They ask the primary care doctor for a referral. Primary care doctor says, okay, we'll go get you a referral to the cardiologist. Us as agents have absolutely no control whether whether the insurance company or the referred to cardiologist will see this patient. None. Zero. But what we do have or we could have a kind of influence on if we were in a different field let's say real estate for example and my real estate client said you know what that's too expensive let's go in with a lower cost okay now I can go and try and influence the decision of the seller because I'd be a buying agent representative right at this point and I could go and say hey we need to lower the price my client wants XYZ price you want ABC price ABC price is too high then I have some influence and I could come back and we could just have this discussion when it comes to Medicare any kind of insurance health insurance that is we are not the real estate broker okay we are not facilitating the transaction of healthcare we are, or we would be, if anything, facilitating the relationship that the broker, the real estate seller, has with the real estate house, the homeowner. That's it, okay? So we can, as Medicare agents, as hopefully you folks do who are on my team, you guys could help give the proper guidance as to what they should do to get these services covered, right? But we have no influence on whether or not something should be covered or not. We can read guidelines, but the ultimate decision does not rest with us. We cannot call up an insurance company, call up Medicare, call up Social Security, and 
say this is what we think you should do because we don't have the power to make those decisions and while yes if it's written hopefully they you know uphold their side of the bargain but that again is not our decision to make what our decision would be then is if we don't like the decision of the Medicare Advantage Company or of Medicare, we would file a grievance, right? That's the protocol to take. So, moral of the story is control what, or know what you can, what you control, know what you don't control. For everything that you don't control, make sure you are forthcoming and accept that those things are outside of your control because once we start trying to control things that are outside of our control that is when things can go terribly wrong because if we tell our client that this should be covered that is not our decision it could say so right on the page covers all preventative services. There will always be an asterisk there as number one, a plan has to be contracted with the physician. Because even with original Medicare, if the provider's not contracted with original Medicare, preventative services aren't gonna be covered, just the way it is. Additionally, the doctor has to bill and accept whatever the plan's terms are, right? Whether it be original Medicare or Medicare Advantage, doesn't matter, the doctor has to agree to those terms. The doctor then also has to be able to code it correctly to receive the compensation. If the doctor codes it wrong, the patient could still potentially be liable or responsible for those charges until the doctor can correct it. Normally that's something that we can help assist with, but ultimately the you know entire process of all these things taking place is not on us. Enough talking about what we don't control. Let's talk about what we can control. Okay, so our main job, I guess, as insurance professionals for Medicare, because Medicare is a almost like I'd say it's a mandatory program, it's like car insurance, right? Gotta have it, you have to have it in order really to, I mean, function as a US healthcare consumer. Without insurance, it'd be really hard if, um, if you wanna like really navigate the system on your own, that's, I won't even go into that. Um, but for us as people who represent different Medicare Advantage companies and different Medicare supplement companies and different Medicare Advantage or Medicare Part D plans, our main goal is to really help our clients understand that the numbers that you see on this page are what you will be paying. The doctors that you see in this network are the doctors that you can be seeing. And the drug plan that's included in this plan covers all these medications. If you if you take a medication that's not on this list, it's not covered, even if it's generic, even if it's cheap, even if it's been out for 30 years, right? You can only go to these XYZ pharmacies. You can only go to these hospitals. That is our job, and that is the information that we control. But, as we all know, sales is not a process done talking to the objective mind, because if that was the case, I could tell you the plan that everyone would pick based on objectivity. It would be the lowest cost, the most efficient plan, and would most likely be an HMO. Now, that's not what most people pick because most people make decisions based on their emotional um, kind of energies. So what then is our job as salespeople? Well, it is to either one, you have to decide which one of your, if, where your clients are at this point, but you need to figure out what is worse for your client, the pain or the pleasure. So 
and then you find the offsetting one for that. For, I'll give you an example, okay? If someone doesn't want to spend any money, okay? Zero money. They want a zero HMO PPO plan. They don't like spending any money. And then you tell them, well, if you choose this plan, it might be zero per month, but if you go to the hospital, it's a $2,000 deductible. And you'll have to pay a $250 deductible if you want to see the doctor. And you have to pay, you know, just lots. Then, 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 then you see whether or not they enjoy saving money on the monthly premium or they just hate spending money. There's a difference. Because if you have someone who enjoys savings, all those high cost services won't matter. Because they're like, I'm healthy, I'm not gonna go to the doctor, right? Makes sense, right? But if there's someone who hates spending money, then you can wiggle around and maybe you show them a plan that might cost a little bit more per month to cover these larger expenses. Say, hey, you know, this plan is $25 a month, but instead of paying that $2,000 hospital deductible, it's a simple $350 copay per day for five days. So we're looking at maximum $1,750 for a five day stay, and there's no deductible. So you can kind of say, hey, well, I know you like, you like saving money, so let's try and get a plan that kind of fits into the middle. If you're trying to do that for somebody who right, hates spending money, then almost all of your negotiation points are gonna be hit with, I'll just pay nothing per month so that I can, you know, scathe by with very little medical usage, not thinking about huge out-of-pocket costs that they could potentially um, absorb or have to pay during their, their medical usage. So that's what we can control. We can control the sales, process and also what information our clients kind of need and how they get it but the operation of the plan which unfortunately is how they use the plan and probably where most problems arise uh, that's not controlled by us so I don't I'm pretty forthcoming when I talk about Medicare plans and, and how the benefits work but I don't say that I have any kind of control of how the benefits work. I am not a service coordinator. I am not a social worker. I am not an insurance company. I'm not a claim specialist. I'm not a doctor. But what I can do is because of my position, I've been in the medical insurance space for a long time, I know that it requires a process. I also know that sometimes using, not using your pharmacy benefits from your insurance plan might actually save you money. I know sometimes that you're able to negotiate down prices from hospital states if you need to. I also know that many times when you're on the phone with an insurance company, you probably have to talk to somebody who is not just the regular customer service person. You probably will have to talk to a supervisor because most of the people who answer the phones on a daily basis are just dealing with very, very normal things, not claims issues. Claims issues usually need to be reviewed and then you have to get contacted again. So you will have multiple encounters with this person so most likely it'll be a supervisor because they're a little bit more accountable i mean i'm thinking about this from a like i was a supervisor at a you know luxurious hotel and as a supervisor i would take care of most of the, the guests who are you know who need to get something done out of the ordinary right and for me, I believe a lot of the claims that my clients go through are out of the ordinary because a lot of times it just, to me, I'm like spinning my head, rolling my eyes, thinking, what is going on here? What, what are they doing? What are they talking about? Like, why is this claim showing up? So, long video. Hope you guys enjoy. You guys have a great weekend. I will talk to you later. AEP is coming up. We got less than two months now. I'll see you guys soon. Be healthy. Do good things. And I'll see you later.